Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance and I have a tool review today and what I want to look at today is the Volt Claw. Uh, they have two versions of these. It's by the Non-Conductive Tool Company LLC. I've had several questions about these from people that have watched my loadout video and saw those in there. I also have questions from time to time when people see me use them so I thought I'd do a video on these. Uh, whenever it comes to non-conductive or insulated tools, we have lots of options today. Uh, we have things like these that are non-conductive 100%. Uh, Knipix also makes a pair of pliers. They sell a needle nose version of these as well uh, that are non-conductive. And then we have insulated tools like these where the handles are insulated. But as far as from past the handles up, the business end of the tool, the, tool, the part of the tool that does the work is the actual same as anything else. If I had any other handles on these, you would just think it was a standard pair of needle nose. Uh, same thing on a screwdriver, insulated from here to here, but the tip of it is no different than this screwdriver in the standard version and so on. So we have lots of tools that are like this and these do a good job at protecting us if we get ourselves in a situation. But if this part of the tool, it, with it still being metal, that's still conductive. So we might not cause damage to ourselves but if we touch two of the right things or we get ourselves in the wrong position, uh, we can still cause damage, whether it's to the equipment or we could have something happen where something in that equipment blows back on us. It kind of reminds me of the game operation whenever I use tools like this, where we're sticking the prongs into the guy that's on the operating table to get the, the piece of toast or the the wishbone out and if you accidentally just touch the side just a hair you hear that dreaded buzzer sound and his nose goes off who knew that whenever we were playing that game as a kid we're not actually teaching ourselves to be doctors but we were teaching ourselves to be electricians so we have tools like this and these work well at keeping us safe but another thing that these tools have typically is most of them still have teeth on them that's the same as, again, the standard version. And if you do enough work on a wire with those, that's gonna cause damage. So whenever we get into looking at these bolt claws, uh, I think that those knock out those two things, uh, any kind of tool like this. One is that it's 100% non-conductive. There's, I can take this and stick it in anywhere. I can touch whatever I want to, as long as I'm not touching it and just this tool is touching it. I'm not gonna cause any problems. And then the second thing is I'm able to grab onto wires and I don't have to worry about teeth causing damage or things like that. Now with that, I'm not gonna have as good a grip obviously, but with these, you can get a fairly decent grip. Uh, so this is the first one that I purchased. Now I've had this one for quite some time and this is the multi-gauge. And it says that it works from six gauge to 14 gauge wire and I had some six gauge here. So this has two functions basically, and that's it. Uh, it can go in and you can hook onto a wire, slide your thumb up and hold on to that wire. So this adjusts to whatever gauge. So here's six. And then if I wanted to move down to, you know, 12 gauge, you can go up and grab a hold of that as well. It says it does to 14, but I mean, it, it goes all the way close. So I would think that you could still maybe even do some smaller than that. Uh, so, you just put the pressure with your thumb so you can grab onto it as tight as you want to, or you can just kind of grab onto it if you're afraid that you're gonna pinch something. So that's the one feature is you can go in and you can grab, you can hook a wire, grab a hold of it, pull it out. So what I use that for is uh, I was working in a junction box where I had a light that had 240 volts because somebody had wired something wrong. They had tied the neutral in or something. So whenever I opened the junction box up, it looked like this. Well, I didn't want to stick my hand in there. Uh, and then I'm working in an office space. There was multiple circuits in that box. And, and the only way for me to really be able to start getting those wires apart to where I could even at the least stick a non-contact voltage tester to some wires where I was only reading one circuit and not two was to be able to stick something like this up in there, start grabbing wires, trying to get them separated the best I can. And then I was able to take care of those things, get that box straightened out, get the light fixed. But a tool like this helps in those situations where you need to stick something in somewhere, but you 
can't be conductive whatsoever because you're so close to the other things that you might would touch something else. If I stuck something like this up in that box, I might would have touched something while I was grabbing a hold of one wire because it was such a tight space uh, versus something like this. This is 100% non-conductive. I didn't have to worry about it. So that's one feature of this one is you can go in, you can grab a wire, pull it out, and do those things. The second feature of this one is a push stick. It's basically has these grooves, whether it's this way or that way. So if you have a wire that's in somewhere that you want to poke and get stuck back in something, it, it, it assists you in doing that. It fits in that little channel, whether you're going in sideways or going in vertically. Uh, that helps, again, pushing things back into a panel if you're just trying to straighten out or clean up your wires. Or if you're installing a GFI or a switch or something, you know how those boxes sometimes become too small, depending upon how many wires are in there. You've got it all wired up and you're trying to get it in there and you've got this one wire that's you know stiff and just doesn't want to go back in there. Well, you can take this stick, you can push on it and get it back in there. That's definitely a lot less likely you're going to damage the wire by using something like this versus this or a screwdriver that you have on you or whatever it is something like this can help you do that so again this is the volt claw multi-gauge and if you're a person who works in clustered panels clustered junction boxes uh, clustered just regular boxes you run into that kind of stuff all the time and you have to work on live stuff. I think that this tool is a good option. The handle is nice. Uh, it's got good gripping, so you don't have to worry about losing anything or slipping. Uh, and then it's about nine inches long as far as the tool. Uh, so that's the Volt Call multi-gauge. Now, whenever you get into the second version, which this says that it's the 12 gauge, uh, according to their website, it says it's a 12 and 14 gauge. It has some other features on it uh, that I guess can be useful to some. There's one on this one in particular that I like, but the other ones I think are kind of, uh, I won't personally ever use them for that, but maybe you would, so I'll share those with you. So this one still has a, a hook on it, so you can go in and grab a 12 gauge wire. Say you're wanting to, you're in a panel and you want to get to that wire that's in the back, you can stick this in there, loop around, pull it out, and do that. That's very similar to this one, except for you don't have the option to go in and grab the wire. So, you know, if it's if this was a loose wire, I'm going to have a hard time pulling that because it's just going to want to move around. But you do you can go in and pull. Uh, and then it also has a push here. So same feature as on the other version. You can go in and stuff the wires back into the box, push it back into where you want to go and this both of these tools do seem to work better on solid wire and not stranded but they do work on stranded okay uh, this one also has a loop feature uh, i'm not sure why you would use that with this tool because you're going to have to strip the wire to make the loop and then so if you've already got your wire strippers on you and you've they make a loop i don't know why you'd want to get out this special tool but uh, I'll just show you that it does do it if you wanted to make one. It doesn't really do it very well because it's so thick. Uh, but that is a feature on here, so I wanted to share it with you. And then it also has a wire nut as far as so you can grab a hold of, tighten and loosen wire nuts. Uh, I don't use that feature either. I always just use my hand. I will say it does work on like the B caps, but it's really, you've got to get it lined up just perfectly. So if you're a person who uses these, I know a lot of people really like those these wire nuts. You know, it doesn't really want to go in there real well. You've got to line up those little grooves just right, and then it will go up in there. Uh, it does work well if you've got some wire nuts that the wings are kind of thin and they're also recessed. Uh, like this one fits up in there good and you can get quite a bit of a grip with that. I think this is the 3M version. Uh, but as far as like, I like these, these are my favorite ones. They're the Twister Pros by Ideal. Uh, they don't really grip onto them at all because the wings are a little bit wider. Uh, so they barely fit into those grooves and with, it just kind of slips going to be hard to show you what it's doing but I, I can't get a hold of that at all it just kind of 
skips past those. So I think that that's kind of more of a, a gimmicky feature. But again, you might have some wire nuts that you use that might would fit in here perfect. And maybe if you want to loosen and tighten those with this, you could. Again, it's a feature, so I'm sharing it with you. I personally just don't use that. I like to be able to feel it while I'm doing it because I can kind of tell if I've got it tight enough or not. This one doesn't have like a, a actual hand imprint for your fingers, but it does have these grooves, which allows you to get a pretty decent grip. Uh, so that's nice. The one feature on this one that I do like, and that's why I went ahead and bought this one just to kind of see, is this turn feature. And I like it because you stick the wire in there and it's almost becomes like a, a conduit bender where you can just make turns in your wire and move it however you want to. So if you're wanting to kind of dress up a electric panel, especially if it has solid wire, again, stranded wire is a little different, doesn't kind of form its way in this way as well. But you can sit here and go around and, and just make bends in, in the wire however you want to. And again, you don't have teeth or anything on this. And I, I could do this by hand, but what if I'm somewhere where I don't want to stick my hands in there? That's not the safest option. Or I could use a different tool, but what if these tools have teeth on it and I've got a chance of doing something to the insulation on this wire? Uh, if I wanted to dress up something like that and, and make my panel look nice and clean, uh, I think that that's a, a good way to go about doing it. And that feature does work nice on this. So if you're a person who likes doing that kind of stuff, that's a pretty neat thing. And this gives you that hook feature to get the wire out. I just personally don't think it's as, as good as this one because you have the ability to grab a hold of it and keep it tight. So again, that's the Volt Claws uh, by Non-Conductive Tool Companies. I'll put a link in the descriptions for these. I, I purchased them separately at different times. I could have saved some money if I bought them together, uh, but I think they're they're both useful. If I had to pick one and the functions that I use for it, I would get this one, but again, it just depends on what you do. And plus this one only does 12 and 14 versus this one I can do from six to 14. So there's a lot more options for more wire with this one. But let me know what you think about them. Let me know if you've got them in the comments below and if you use them and what you think about them as well, or if you have some other tool that does features like this, uh, shoot that down in the comments because I'm always looking for things like this. I, I purchased these Knipix ones after, after I bought these and these come in handy at certain times. I'm probably gonna get the needle nose ones. That's what I wanted originally, but those were always sold out but I would like to have a little bit thinner profile than this, so I might get those as well. But I hope that this was interesting to you and hope that you find it useful. And I hope for those of you that have commented, asking me questions about them, that maybe shares a little bit of what they're for for you. But let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it. Make sure and subscribe if you haven't yet. But I hope that you guys have a blessed day and a great weekend, and I'll see you on the next video.